guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we have this amazing panel right here. We have Sister Nicole on my left. Probably you're right when you're seeing this video. Below Sister Nicole, we got Brother Jave. Right next to him, we got Brother Maurice. Right next to Brother Maurice, we got Sister Jillian. Above Sister Jillian, we got Brother Ryan. And below, below, Hello. I got to give Brother John a real good introduction. I I really got to give Brother John a good introduction. We got the amazing, the talented, the ball headed with an amazing beard. Brother John. To begin, uh, I just want you guys to just uh, <laughs> say the church that you're from and your position in the church, uh, starting from Sister Nicole. Uh, I am from the Harlem Church. Uh, Harlem Church got a prophecy, and I am one of the Pioneer Camp Youth um, Directors currently. I'm from the Bushwick Family Ministries Church of God of Prophecy. I currently serve as the Associate Pastor as well as the Youth Pastor, and within the Brooklyn District, I serve as the Brooklyn District Leader. I'm Maurice Cassell, and um, recently served uh, a few years ago as the Northeast Regional Youth and Transitions Ministry Director, as well as Youth Camp Director, uh, Evangelism Director, and uh, Leadership and Discipleship uh, Director uh, for the Northeast Region Church of God Prophecy. Currently serving uh, in the middle Georgia area where I uh, serve alongside our senior pastor, um, Billy Flower. So that's been my journey, uh, as well as serving the Church of God Prophecy internationally uh, on committees, and youth ministry. Apologize. My name is Sister Jillian, and I um, attend the Albany Church of God of Prophecy. Um, currently, I am the singles ministry leader, and I will serve as a youth ministry leader in the district as well as my local church in regards to singles ministry. And in the region, I am a uh, co director for the Trailblazers. Thank you for your introduction. I was a former camper of Sister Jillian, so she's known me for many years now. Brother Ryan. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for having me here. Uh, my name is Brother Ryan. I um, served in camp as well as a camp evangelist for uh, the Trailblazers. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, currently serve in the in the Albany Church of God Prophecy um, as a music director, uh, worship leader, co-director of the choir. Um, did youth ministry for about uh, six or seven years. Um, and uh, my current position right now, again, is just doing uh, music ministry. Hey, everyone. Hi, yeah. I am Sister Kershaw, and um, I attend the Church of God of Prophecy at East New York, which is in Brooklyn, New York. Um, currently, <laughs> yes, that's Ron, yay. Um, currently, I um, hold multiple positions, uh, including uh, I'm one of the directors of the youth department locally. I am also a part of the public relations ministry here. And I also teach Sunday school. I used to teach um, the teens class when we were live and in person. Um, and as Ron <laughs> in my class that's how i know ezra amen thank you guys for your amazing introduction we have an amazing group of people today to answer the amazing questions that we have for them today the question that i asked the youth were are you engaged in church why why not the youth response was before the pandemic i was engaged in church but after the pandemic hit it became harder to be engaged in a church since we weren't in person and had no longer responsibility in the church. The question that I have for the leaders are, how can you still keep the youth engaged in spite of the pandemic? The floor is now open for answers. Well, I know for me being in education, um, tapping into those uh, tech technological realms to be able to engage the youth has been something that um, I feel strongly about. Uh, definitely using this platform of Zoom has allowed us to um, connect people across um, not just our local areas but the district and the region and allowing us to share our screens to share powerpoints to share games um, is one way that we're able to keep our youth engaged uh, for me what came to mind was and I, i'm not sure that people would think of it this way maybe even the, the youth themselves and of course leaders but i think 
that this pandemic allowed for young people, it created room uh, for you guys organically. In other words, uh, we were the ones that were uh, 10 steps behind. You were already ahead of us in terms of technology, in terms of Zoom. So now we are having to lean into you. So uh, I think that the room has been created. Uh, you are the voices right now. Um, you know, we've had to uh, submit to you. We've had to say, you know, you know what to do. Uh, so I think that your, your gifts and, and talents are, are rising to the top and it's revealing more and more to the church how important young people are. And it's also revealing to us where we fell short because we fell short in recognizing those gifts and not valuing things like the audiovisual ministry. In the past, it was just, you know, give these guys, you know, pass a note up to them. You know, they don't really matter. You know, they're in the back. But now we're realizing the value that you have. So I say the space is already there. Walk in it. Uh, you know, you have our ear, you have our attention. And without you, we cannot function right. I just wanted to add in um, and say, I think the first step to engagement is building relationships. Um, I think we really need to get on a one-on-one -on -one relationship level and find out um, from the young people what it is that they want. Where do they feel like they fit in? And I think when we start to have those conversations, the conversation in itself is going to help them to be engaged. And I think we can just use that as a platform and just build on it. So simply, you know, I do send out sometimes some text messages, hey, how you guys doing? trying to figure out what they want, how they're going, and how I can support them, and how they want to be supported, and how they want to be, uh, be able to contribute to the ministry. So I think conversations are very important to have with um, the young people, and one-on-one -on -one is the best. I agree with what everyone is saying. Um, the Bible talks about knowing those who labor among you. So we have a lot of young people. We have a lot of everybody that's a part of the church everybody as as a former pastor of my my late bishop always used to say um as a member you count one and the church would be otherwise dwarfed and crippled without you each person has their place everybody is <clears throat> gifted with something so yeah everybody has a talent but there are gifts that are given to each of us from God himself that need to be manifested among us. And when we, I guess, first and foremost, pray for our leaders that God will give them wisdom to be able to see us beyond just looking at us first and foremost, then God will be able to open up their hearts and their minds and their understanding to see who we are as people and see what we bring to the table because we are all very talented. Ezra, look at what you're doing. I'm sure you just, you know, it didn't just happen one day, but something was lit inside of you. There's something that you wanted to do. There's something that you wanted to see. And I'm sure somebody somewhere, I know you're surrounded by Brother Jave and Brother John and all these um, mighty men of God that poured into you. They saw something, they encouraged something in you. And now look at the platform that you have. This doesn't require you to use money. You don't have to go out and raise a million dollars to send out a note, to send out a video. There are so many different ways. I mean, later on, I can give you some of the things that I came up with, but first and foremost, it's your responsibility to pray for your leaders so that they will be able to have those eyes of God that can see that there is something special in you and then be able to pull that out so that you can be a part of you know everything that's going on and you don't feel left out i'm sorry I, if you don't mind me jumping in because this is on my heart and i don't want to forgive uh, uh to forget this so uh panel just allow me because I, I think this is so important that i do and perhaps you'll resonate with this um it's important that um i say to the young people that on behalf of those of us who are older and the leadership we apologize for where we've missed you we apologize for where we have not seen your gifts, for where we've uh, unintentionally or intentionally offended, hurt, and harm you. And I think that's important because a lot of times when uh, young people have been hurt uh, by the very place that they should have been healed, 
it's so difficult for them to hear and receive uh, from us and from our hands. So I, I, I hope that's meaningful uh, to you. It, it comes from my heart. Um, and, you know, I'm in a season of my life where I'm, you know, I'm no longer the young person. I, I'm the leadership. I'm the older person. And I realize it's so important that I reach back and say, I, I missed it. I, I, I failed you in some areas, but I was doing my best. So please uh, receive uh, our, uh, you know, our apologies uh, and just know that, you know, we want to do better. Uh, and that's why what Ezron is doing is so important because he's bringing the generations together so that we're no longer divided and separated because of what my generation and the previous generations did. So thank you for allowing me to say that because that's heavy on my heart. And I fully agree with that statement. And that was my aim for this year to bring all three generations together. Because in church, we all know that the generations are separated. And I didn't want that. My channel is mainly for the youth. Uh, but the good thing with my channel is it don't matter what age you are, you can watch the video. Whether you're older, like in a Lisa position, like our brother um, Maurice or brother John, you can watch and start to get ideas and start showing it to you. So that was my um, mission for this year, bring everybody together. Youth, um, brother Javi's generation, and then brother Maurice's generation all together. That's my piece. Yeah, we absolutely love what you're doing, Ezran, because it gives us so much insight, right? Um, to how you guys are feeling, to what you guys think, because your ideas, they do matter. Your ideas do make a difference, right? And so we, I thank you for that. And I, I thank God that you have been consistent and you keep going. You've been doing this for months and I tell you all the time how proud I am of you. And I, I do mean that. Um, just to piggyback off uh, Kershell, I, I believe relationships, relationships, excuse me, are absolutely important. And even so more, much more now, right? Because uh, Zoom is kind of what we replace with meeting in person, right? But it, it doesn't replace the relationship, right? Because they were coming to church before and they could just come to church and you not have a relationship with them. So Zoom is not, it's just the medium through how we're reaching you guys, but the relationship is absolutely essential uh, to lead in you guys. Before I show you my hand, right, I show you my heart, right? And so we really have to build and cultivate a lasting relationship with them. The phone calls cannot be, hey, why didn't you get on Zoom? But no, how are you doing? How is school? What's going on in life? How are your parents? what's going you know you know what i'm saying so it, it can't just center it around church and i tell the leaders that in, in church all the time don't attack the young people when you call them why didn't you come to church no find out how are they doing how is school are, are, are you good, doing good in your studies what's your plan for college right so um relationships are important and i, I concur with uh, all that was said you know you're doing an amazing work and um it's it's a, a means for communication you know between um generations as was said before and um you know, I would say, um, as far as keeping them engaged during the pandemic, um, I would say uh, definitely listening, you know, listening to uh, each young person, uh, you know, reaching out, you know, definitely reaching out um, as we talked about establishing the relationship. Um, I think transparency is my tidbit there um, because with 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 us not being able to come together and rub elbows like we used to and hug like we used to and all that stuff, your transparency is your hug. Your transparency is is that that dap, you know, whatever, you know, because what what what's happening is um, we have to uh, be able to teach and communicate to these young people how you live your life every day outside of church. You're not in the walls anymore. You know, how do you, from the moment you wake up, you know, your alarm goes off and you get up and get ready for school or whatever it is. How do you exemplify in your private life, you know, a life that is, you know, connected to Christ? Because now, you know, we've, we've had the Bethel experience, you know, that's what we've had all these years. In other words, house of God, you know, that's what's been perpetuated, you know, it's how you come to church and, and, and be the church. But now we have to teach these young people through relationship, through transparency, how do you do it right at home? You know, how do you have that experience like Jacob had wrestling with the angel outside, you know, the, the Peniel experience. So we got to get these people, these young people from Bethel to Peniel because God never stays in the house. He was never in the house to begin with. 
Penile, you don't forget penile. Penile stays with you because penile is the encounter with God that happens outside when you're alone, in your closet, in the car, in your room. That's what penile is. And the transparency, when you when you talk to the young people, you know, we got to find a way to be able to bear our heart, you know, show our scars, show our weaknesses. That's what creates that connectivity because then they'll feel like, okay, you're real. You're real. I could talk to you. I can I can connect with you, you know. And so I think that right there will carry a lot of weight with with these young people because we see that you know they're attracted to people like Cardi B and Meg The Stallion and people who are unashamed about the lifestyle that they're living. You know, no holds barred. It used to be something that was disdained before, but now it's championed. So they're looking for people that are just like raw and real about it. And I think that's one key to helping us stay engaged in this pandemic when we come to our youth services and stuff like that. Are, are we bringing conversations that are, you know, um, engaging enough? I got a hot second. Um, forgive me for jumping in and out. Um, my main thing uh, listening to everyone is um, what we're going with. It's also, I guess, I think I'm in the middle. Like I look, at, look at my race. My race always like to joke around and say, my race was my youth leader. And then I turn around and see those that came under me. And the thing is, um, from my experience, is the church has to remember we're all one body. And um, I remember growing up, and I'm, I'm hearing like my youth leaders, like Sister Nikki, Brother Maurice, they had this complaint. And then I see my generation come around. We had this complaint. The generation under me, they had this complaint. And now the young children coming up now, they have the complaint. Our elders, they have the complaint. Their elders, they have the complaint. And I think it comes back to something I heard uh, about Asia actually for, for COGOP, our regional youth director. We got to come back to our fundamentals. We have to reteach that the body of Christ is not an age. The body of Christ is not one generation. It does no good for the church to be all elders, and it does no good for the church to be all young people. But it does excellent for the church to be honest and transparent, regardless of where you are. If I'm going through some issues, as I even say this, I always, I used to joke um, about church, and I still use it sometimes. I said, if it hadn't been for the Lord himself to tell me about the church, I wouldn't be in one. Because what I see, and compared to what I was taught, it does not match. And I think a big thing that we have to give our young people is we have to take the veil off. The veil of life has to be taken off. Yep, you speak in tongues on Sunday at 11 o'clock, but one o'clock, you might want to speak in a whole different other tongue. And that's all right. That's the reality of life. Show me what life is. When you get married, show me that it's not all, oh, yes, we're running to the bedroom. No, you got bills to pay. Sometimes you can't make money for the bills. Sometimes your spouse can't cook the dinner right. But we have to get to a place of honest transparency. I'm trying to find a job. You're telling me go to college. I went to college and I got the degree, but I can't find the job. But we all say the whole time, trust God, trust God. What does that mean? In your day, in your time, how do I get through it? And I think that's why we do have young people always lean towards the pop culture. Pop culture never lies, I've learned. Cardi B never lies. It is what it is. But when you get to church, I see the bishop or the bishop when I'm in the church, but I still don't get to see the person afterwards. And so I think a big thing that has to happen as we, because even I look at uh, this gathering here, can we have some leaders that say, you know what, let me come down to your level, but also see me on my level past my title. So I, I give that for my little two cents. Um, to be more engaged really goes with the reality of us as humans. At the end of the day, we have to remember beyond our, our Christianity, beyond our faith, you're still a human. And from there, let's build together that we walk with the Lord on one accord. Those are my two cents. Amen. And the perfect way I did that is making the um I did a daily routine video where I showed 
me from doing schoolwork to going into my Bible, to meditating, to eating, to just show you a rawness of me. Because I'm a very raw person if you if you really get to know me. I show all aspects of myself. But I wanted everybody to see those aspects of myself. See that I'm not only my Christian stuff, but I can make fun of people in no disrespectful way. Uh, I, can, I can laugh. I can enjoy myself. I can meditate. I can read. I can do so much thing because... Christianity is a big aspect of, my, of all our life, but it's not the only aspect of my life. And with that being said, we're going to move on to the second question. The question I asked the youth was, what does the church do now that engages you? And if so, do you want them to do more of that or something else? The youth says, the church have youth service where we get more in deep about God and talk about different topics. The church... Sorry, the church youth service keep me engaged because you use things like you use things that I like to bring the word together and have fun. We use Kahoot, TikToks, and games to talk about God. The question I have for you guys are: Are you willing to add fun and games to your youth service to better keep the youth engaged? And I'll just give um, again. I reflect back on my time as youth director, and as a young uh, youth director, you know, I always thought: Listen, you you want to have the you want to know the lingo, you want to dress like the young people, you want to be exactly like the young people and, you know, just, you know, just to connect. And as I got older, and I remember this experience and, and Sister Nikki, this happened uh, at one of our, our, our Bronx retreats. You know, I was teaching and I asked this question. I said, you know, do you want, um, you know, me as the regional youth director, do you want me to act like you and dress like you? And one of the young ladies raised her hand, raised her hand, and she said, no, because you old. I mean, she hurt me. She really hurt me deeply. But uh, we, we all laughed at that. And it was, it was a teachable moment for me that what young people are looking for is not that we act like you, dress like you, and sound like you, and learn the latest thing. It's really what we've said before. You want relationship. You want authenticity. You want us to be who we are, but just know that we care about you. So certainly, uh, we're going to do our best to engage you as much as we can. But also keep in mind that, you know, I've learned that I don't need to dress exactly like you. I don't need to know all the latest songs. I don't need to know, you know, what WAP means. I know it, you know it, but, you know, you don't need to, you know, in essence, what I'm saying is I've realized that young people are drawn to people who they find out are genuine, who are authentic in who they are, because you can sniff out a phony, right? You can sniff out when an adult is trying to fit in, right? So my goal is not to fit in with you. My goal is to be authentically me and for you to know my heart, that I care about you and I'm going to make room for you. I'm going to do my best to, you know, be aware of what some of the the culture is saying, uh, but I think it's more important, uh, as I've learned, being now that I'm an older minister, so to speak, that I, I, I'd be there for you. Does that make sense? Even though I'm not physically in ministry in my local church right now, um, I have been a high school English teacher for the past 14 years, and the training that I've received from that, the life experience training that I've received from that. One of the things that causes me to connect with my students, and I deal with some hardcore young people that, yeah, they need stuff. But in order, at, at the end of the day, I can see them smile from their hearts. At the end of the day, they can literally come to me and tell me about a boyfriend beating them up behind the scenes, telling me about a baby that they tried to abort that was calling them from their womb. They can come to me and literally tell me their life stories and trust me with that as a, a regular old teacher. Why? Because of the be my students. And I tell them all the time, uh, yeah, no, I already did my teens. I've been there, I've done that. I'm not trying to go back there. I don't want to be like you, but I do want to be there for you. So they need an example. You guys need examples. And that only comes through relationship. 
that you can open up to us, we can open up to you. You can see that your hardship, you know, you're in a gang or whatever the case may be. You can come out of that because you've seen that we have been open and honest with you about the struggles that we've had to grow up with. And you can do the same. If we made it, you can make it too. And you can't see that just by reading it in a book. There has to be relationship between both parts. So I just wanted to jump in with that. That's real, that's real talk right there. And just to um, continue on with your question, Ezran, um, right now you said the young people like the games and the things that we do so far. And locally, we try our best to include those in there because we know you like it, we'll try our best to include it. But at the end of the day, the main thing is the word. So right now, locally, we have our youth meeting structured. First and second is in the word and out of the box, as we call it. We try our best to you know, uh, give the word, but not necessarily just like a Sunday morning flow. We try to do it different ways. So if it's games, if it's uh, whatever other activities that we do. So we try our best to incorporate it already. So we're already doing that. Um, and then the third Friday that we meet of the month is our mix up. So sometimes we do game night, sometimes we do panel. Um, we may even do boys and girls because it's good to have separate time too. So um, yes, definitely we have been willing to incorporate based on feedback. And I believe that's the driving force to making your youth services meaningful to always seek feedback and say, hey, you know, what? is it that you're looking for? What can we do to, to make you connect more? Um, and I think once we start looking for feedback, because feedback is good, right? We at, at work, they give us feedback at least once a year um, or sometimes more frequent if they need to. Uh, so feedback is good. Let's get some feedback. And um, you guys like the games, we can find ways to include the games. But at the end of the day, we have a responsibility as leaders to give you the word. So it's not going to be just fun, 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 fun. You have to get the word because the word is what's going to help you to grow and mature as a Christian. Yeah, I absolutely love what, what Kershaw said. So the same at Bushwick, we have been uh, doing the games on Zoom, of course, and it, it's been a way by means we build that relationship even more with them, right? It's times of laughter and fun that they really can see me outside the youth leader position, right? But they get to see Jave. Oh, Jave laughs, he cracks up, Jave has jokes. Um, so it's been great, but I do agree that there must be a healthy balance between the games and the word. Because what I noticed is that they'll be excited for the games, but when it comes time from the word that they're not excited, they fall off or their camera goes off and they don't, they're not engaged anymore, right? So we want you to be equally excited to discuss the word as you are to play the game. And we, we have to maintain that balance. And uh, Kershaw, we have a similar setup at Bush Rick. The first and second Friday, we'll do the word. And then uh, the third Friday, something like that, we'll do strictly game night. But what we've done um, the first and second Friday as it relates to the word is we'll use object lessons. So they're not necessarily games, but um, it's something that they can connect with outside of the word, something a little bit more tangible, um, something they can relate to in, in hopes of bringing the word home for them to make it a little bit more clear. Right? So uh, we're all down for the games. So. Well, I'm a big kid and I will forever be a big kid. So I'm about the games. And so we definitely bring the games into our youth service. Um, but when we have our games, we tie our games for our game night with the word. So every question that's asked and everything that's been um, incorporated in that game night has everything to do with the word because we want to make sure that they're coming out with you know a clear understanding of characters in the bible simple things like the shortest book like oftentimes we think we take those things for granted um we know that our former generations they were actually drilled and killed with the word and had to memorize scriptures and had to do all these things so we want to find ways to incorporate the word um, in a fun way. And then something else that we've incorporated is that we, I, we actually paid um, those who got the most points. We used the chat um, to allow everyone to actually um, in, 
be involved into that particular game night. And everybody had to give a response because we wanted everybody to be incorporated. So the game night is something that we want to um, incorporate, but we want to also find other ways to have games um, that will engage our youth. But when we have game night, the goal is for you to also show up because oftentimes um, we're having these game nights or we're putting out these things that are, are happening, but sometimes the attendance is lacking. So if you're going to have game night, make sure you show up. And uh, just to concur with everyone, you know, I think that youth service shouldn't feel like prayer service, you know, it shouldn't feel like the prayer line, you know, um, it's young folks, <laughs> you know, and we all know what it is to to be young and have, and have been young and all that stuff. So, um, you know, I think when I was youth leader, I definitely always had some kind of a, a game somewhere, you know, but um, just like everyone else said, it, it, everything needs to be um, rooted in the word at some point. And we just have to be creative um, in how we present the word. You know, it doesn't always have to, on the face value, come off as if you're about to bring a word. You know, you can use something that's going to pull it in and then you that's your anchor. And then you pull the word to substantiate whatever example you have, whatever object you have. Object lessons are so powerful, you know, when it comes to teaching the word. So um, definitely whatever means it is, we have to um, create uh, fun and, and engagement. And that's the thing about the games, man. Um, you, you get to find characteristics in people that you wouldn't even, you know, ordinarily see. You know, some people, when they come to youth service, they're reserved, you know, until you get to, you know, rub elbows and do things that really, really get them to expose their thoughts or their other, uh, like, uh, characteristics. The other day I went out uh, to hang out with some guys that I don't ever really hang out with. I don't really do much hanging out. Um, and uh, I got invited to um, a, a bowling, uh, it was a birthday party bowling for one of these guys. And. Um, a few of the folks that were there, some younger guys, younger musicians, and we we're bowling. And, you know, um, so uh, I'm quite animated when it comes to certain things that involve in competition. And somebody said to me, he was like, Ryan, you're competitive, aren't you? I'm like, you got no idea. <laughs> like, I, yeah, you, you see me, as, mm, yeah, but let you put the basketball on the floor and you'll see what happens. You know, like, so when you do the games, it brings out these things that you don't really know about people sometimes. And so... You know, that's, that's definitely something that we can use as a tool in, in our youth. Right, I keep flip-flopping. Um, my intake, my take about games, I think it is important. I think everything comes with a good balance. Um, I agree with everyone. It's like there's a place for the games, but you've got to remember, too, there's also a place for the word, too. I think some things that gets forgotten about uh, youth service as of itself is... And I always say it's, it's a two-way thing when it comes to youth service. We want you to come, but you also have to understand what you're coming for. Um, you, you are coming to youth service to, in essence, build relationship, build connection, but also get fed something that will help your soul. I think sometimes that, that we have to put both sides to it. Sorry, Maya. So with, um, I do feel that games are important, but I think also at the same time, we got to communicate. Uh, the intention of our gathering. It's like, all right, we're coming together today. You know, like, not to sound cheesy, but you know, when we go to weddings, like daily beloved, we're gathered here today to join so and so together the holy matrimony. It's, hey guys, all right, cool. We're here. We're going to have some fun. But today, too, we're going to also talk about whatever it is. Um, just to keep that into perspective there. And I think sometimes, too, um, I don't know. I, I keep blaming age. I, I'm kind of in the fence. I hear it from the young side, but I hear it from the leadership side, too. It's like, you got to understand that, hey, you're here because God has called me to help feed you. So understand, yep, let's play the games, but also to get to the place of a different maturity that we can talk about some things and grow together. And even too, I think sometimes too, it was a challenge for us as leaders to find new ways to teach. It's not always just in the traditional sense of, all right, I'm going to sit down and lecture you. There's, there's ways to teach in a game. You know, there's ways to teach it, the, during the dinner, you know, we have to learn to be creative and realize too, I think from a leader's perspective, our young people aren't created to learn the way we were. We have to learn and continue to go to the Holy Spirit. Teach me how to teach this generation and teach the generation how to learn from my generation as we go. 
Thank you for your response. Brother John, I think baby Maya was just agreeing with you. I, I, I felt an amen, a hallelujah. I felt that Jesus is, is Lord. I, I just felt all that coming out for Maya. So thank you, baby Maya, for that. We'll be moving on into the, to the last and final question. Question I the use where, what can the church do more to keep you engaged? You said you think that I like to talk about the God to talk about God, use games and other exciting ways uh, to talk about the word. Question for the leaders, are you willing to use game and other exciting ways to talk about the word and learn more about the word? Since we already talk about the games, scratch the games and just other exciting ways. So we already mentioned the game. I think other exciting ways to incorporate the is using today's current events, what's happening today, or using certain video clips um, from maybe a music video that they're watching and how it might relate. So not saying we're going to sit there and play a whole Cardi B video, but how does this relate to Sodom and Gomorrah? Or, you know, so, something, you know, like, how can we relate what you're seeing today um, with the word of, of God, because you are bombarded each and every day with things that pretty much were spoke about in the word, but they're seen today in a different way. Um, so we want to be able to bridge that gap um, with showing you things um, that will help you. I remember like hearing a word about just a plant and all the different things within a plant and how you know that relates to a gardener or how it relates to pruning and different things like that. You might hear something in a word about soccer and endurance and different things like that. Whatever it is that's a topic of your interest, we wanna hone in on those topics. So if you wanna get with your youth leader and say, listen, I really wanna learn about you know why I shouldn't have sex before I'm married or why is it important for us to read the word or what is holiness and you know how it deals to that they may come up with something about a washing machine and tell you about holiness through a washing machine and that analogy so I don't know if you just give us a word help us to help you to better understand you know the word a little bit better and like I said it's a it's a, a, a creative way for you to learn about the word I agree with Jillian um, I love more hands-on kind of things, moving away from the game things. Um, just giving you guys some things to do. For instance, form support groups with each other or study groups. You need some help with geometry or whatever, and one of you is doing good and one of you is not doing good. Surround each other, call each other up and help each other in the areas that, you know, um, we heard on the news, I heard on the news, uh, was it yesterday, that there is like this thing, especially amongst the high school students who can't go back to school yet, um, that their grades have dropped. There's so many failing high schoolers right now that has dropped dramatically from, you know, last year compared to this year, this time. And it's because of being stuck in the house by themselves and all of this stuff and everything else. So help each other out, call each other up, form support groups with each other, study groups. Um, if you have a car, some of you drive, y'all can do some drive-bys, hook, uh, hit up each other. You know, can we drive by this person's house? We know that they're not doing too good or they just need something. Put a balloon, tie a balloon to their door and then, you know, honk, honk your horn for them to come out and something, you know, find ways to bring God's word to life. You've been taught God's word. I don't think that you all don't know it. I believe that you know God's word. You just need to start living it and you need more ways to be able to live it that doesn't just look so churchy because we're not called to sit in the church. We're called to go into the world and do stuff. Um, a couple more things, check on, check in on your neighbors, um, research, you know, how to help other people, like uh, whatever needs are amongst you, how do I help this person? You know, if there's exercises needs, you know, what do I do? How do I research this person's dis illness or disease that I can help them get through this? Um, have friends write letters. This is one of my personal favorites to the police, 
to the law enforcement, encouraging letters to them, and somebody or a group of y'all go drop it off at the local precinct or the fire station, you know, do something that literally brings purpose to your life. And the only way that you have purpose is when you actually reach out to other people. So those are my kind of things. I love to just come up with different things. So you're not just reading Matthew 6 and 6. You're actually living Matthew 6 and 6. And then when you read it, it now starts to make sense. Oh, Jesus called us to be light. He calls us to be salt. And this is what it really means, helping someone else in need. And that's, that's what I love to do. And that's what I encourage my young people to do go out and do something for someone else so i love that sister nicole and sister oh my goodness my yeah. friend how did i forget you yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> um but <laughs> sorry about that yes so um i agree with that i believe um and I did mention it before, you know, panel discussions. I have seen the young people go crazy for panel discussions because panel discussions are questions that the young people have um, that they get a panel to answer, right? You know, we talked about transparency earlier. Um, a couple of people talked about transparency. Panels are awesome way to be transparent, but I love the idea of going outside of the building. Um, my co-director in East New York, Brother Gio, always talks about when we do the boys and girls before COVID, he used to take the boys to the basketball court, but he said it wasn't just basketball. The word got in there somewhere. So I don't know if he was having them say, um, <laughs> dribble and quote scriptures. I don't know how it went, but because I wasn't there. I was with the girls. But even that, you can, when you have that separate time, um, whether it's boys or girls, and you have that separate time, you can do non-churchy things, but still find a way to insert the word in there. Like I said, when you're dribbling down the court, you gotta quote John 3, 16. We just learned it last week or something. Um, and similarly with the females, you know, we've done Manny Petties and stuff. Um, hey, we're sitting down doing that. Let's talk about we're adorning ourselves beautifully, but God wants us to be beautiful on the inside too. So I think it's really just kind of getting out of the box with and i think the church building has been confining us for a lot of years um church building is beautiful by the way um but yes uh, the pandemic has pushed us to now think about what we can do um we can have fun and, and insert jesus in there too just want to add like something else um that we did this is a show um based on Ezra and helping us out here is that we can merge with other churches. Like the best thing you could possibly do is call up somebody and say, hey, you service tonight, us, Albany and Malta Street or Albany and Bushwick or Albany and Harlem, whatever church it is, like we want to merge and actually bring our youth together because a lot of times our youth only see each other during camp or during convention or during uh, youth services. Uh, in regards to the region. So one way that we can make better engage you is to do partnerships with other churches. You can see a lot of your friends um, from these other churches. And not only that, I feel like when we do partnerships, it actually brings out the personalities of others because if one church has fewer youth and another ch church has more youth that come out, then it gives the opportunity for your church's youth to hear the ideas and and, and you know thoughts of other people and say wow me too i actually feel that way um it helps even the leaders at our personalities to come out in regards to oh i didn't know that leader was struggling with that because you guys have to understand and i will be transparent as a leader i don't know everything i don't know how to do everything and so i am depending on you as a youth to help help me out because I'm surrounded by youth every day, and that's why I like stay young pretty most for the most of the part of the time. But I don't know what you need. I don't know that you're hurting about a specific topic that I might have went through myself because I went through a lot of things. But I don't know if you never bring it out yourself. So partnerships help. 
I agree. With, I, I agree with that, and I love that because our our church, as in um, me and Sister Kershaw Church, we came together with the Jillian and two other churches. I do not remember the name. Uh, I apologize to those two other churches. I don't remember the name of them. Yeah, but, Ozone, the Ozone. Manhattan Harlem, yes. Manhattan Harlem, but I think somebody came from Massachusetts. Yeah. So we had at least like eight churches, I think, together. Um, and we just came together and I saw how much fun the youth had, how uh, we, were, we, were, we were doing a video in the series that I'm currently doing right now, but how everybody was just itching to give a response, but we couldn't give everybody a response because we had to move on to the next question, but they, it was lovely. It was lovely. Um, that helped me a lot, especially like going to Ken, um, you, um, you, you retreat, just going to those places, meet new people, green new people. It's just amazing. I love my church. I love the people in my church, but I love meeting new people and I love having a conversation with new people. And I know a lot of youth are like that too. So I suggest that come together, merge with other churches. Javi, since you the assist, associate pastor, we got to do something with our church together. We'll talk about that later, but I'll let you respond to the question. No, nah, definitely. We can, we can set something up. The past few months have just been a little bit crazy. Um, but I am in agreement with everything um, everyone said. Absolutely great ideas. I think um, the Zoom space that we're now trying to navigate um, has been challenging, right, in terms of engagement. Um, because some of the stuff we, 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 you guys mentioned, that's outside of church or when we're meeting together. But now that we're on Zoom for, I know my church, the foreseeable future, right? We don't know when this is this thing is going to turn around. How can we keep that engagement going? Um, yes, so we'll use games and different activities. One thing I found um, that works well, Sister Nikki, is uh, like you said, projects, right? So we would do breakout rooms, put them in different breakout rooms um, with young adults and youth and, and assign them something to do. Because um, it's not that you guys don't want the word or you don't want to come to church. I think it's how we deliver it, right? And if we can improve on how we deliver it and let it be relatable to you, um, then you will benefit more from it, right? And then now you will begin to live the word, right? Um, and you will really know the word. So we're still trying to navigate the space of Zoom. So be patient with us. And what we, what I always tell my young people is, uh, let us know what interests you. What are your ideas, right? Um, because I know for us at Bushwick, the Zoom space has is, is challenging because uh, we can't play games every week. And uh, we can, but honestly, games kind of get boring after a while, right? In a sense, on Zoom, I mean, on Zoom. Um, we've played so many different games, Kahoot, uh, Family Feud, Bible Jeopardy, Regular Jeopardy. Uh, we've gone over to House Party. We've done uh, categories. We've done so much games, right? But again, we don't want you to, to be just excited for the games because at the end of the day, the games won't keep you, the word will, right? So projects and um, breakout rooms and, and Kershell, I'm gonna try the panel. I haven't done that at Bushwick yet, but I'm gonna try that and see how that goes. I'm 100% for panels. Um, you know, anytime you can get minds opened up and opinions brought to the floor and dialogue and discourse, you know, that's what we want um, with these young people. And it's, it's highly important that we have those. Because what I've what I've started to find, man, these generations move fast, you know. Like the the folks that are just like four years young is a, on a whole different page, you know. That's why I'm finding like you you talk to them, you know, and it's like whoa, what, you know, like what, what where am I? Oh, Ten years ago or what? You know, like it was. It's, it's it's so it's important that we talk, you know, to to get what's going on in their heads and what what's being set in these spaces that we're not always in you know because a lot of times they're talking to each other and and we don't know you know how they're relating and and what they're defining and what they're um uh, uh they're they're determining to be concrete you know in their own conversations and so um the panel is so powerful and um so i definitely agree with using that you know i'm bored with using that. i love panel discussion um especially when you have seasoned seasoned people too you know, because these young people need that. Um, and, and definitely when it comes to finding more exciting ways or more intriguing ways to to uh, bring the word, you know, um, I, I think that, you know, the more relatable we can make it, the more practical, you know, we can make it is is the better. Um, you know, we can be we can be very cerebral about what it is that we choose and how it is that we go about 
opening up the word, you know, I know for myself, you know, the way that I always approach it, you know, is, is very life based, you know, I'll talk about turning on a life switch, you know, it'll be that simple, you know, because I can relate to walking in a room and it's dark and I got to turn on the light and I'll find a word that talks about turning on the light, you know, everybody can relate to turning on a light. You know, you don't live in a house where it's dark. So find things that are very reachable, you know, for them. You know, as we someone mentioned earlier, looking at the things in the culture, you know, what's going on. Jesus didn't talk about, you know, um, Burger King and Pizza Hut because he didn't have Burger King and Pizza Hut. So he had to use bread and fish, you know. So we have to use the things that are going on in their world and in our world. And um, but yes, let it be simple but effective, you know, and, and we can be you know very surgical about how we do that to really get their attention you know and, and that's the other thing like I, I was watching uh or i was a part of a zoom you know service one time and the preacher was like i'm not i'm not keeping my sermon short anymore because i read in the bible where paul was long-winded and you know a young man fell out the window and died or something like that and so i'm just gonna go and preach the word and i'm sitting there like what that, that's what you took from that like our sermons don't have to be 45 minutes long. I found that some of the most effective sermons, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, get it in there, get it out, hit the point, because they ain't going to remember anyway. <laughs> so you want sticky stuff, you know, and, you know, the more creative we can be, the more, the more people will remember, these young people will remember and be engaged. I really agree with that. The youth attention span, including mine, is short. I and it's really getting shorter. Yeah, it's getting shorter. I really have to be interested in entertainment for for me to keep paying attention for a long period of time. That's why I try to make my stuff, my message as simple as possible because I know how I am and I know from experiencing it and seeing it how they are. So I make sure I keep myself uh, as simple and small as possible. But uh, with the with the stuff that the youth are interested in, just in case there's any youth that love love and hip hop, I have a love and hip hop episode in the Bible. And in case you don't know what that episode is, how the children of Israel came together. That's a whole love and hip hop episode right there. I remember when I found that out. I was by Brother Geo House. We was reading the entire chapter. I did not I did not think that happened in the Bible. I, I was flabbergasted. But there's a bunch of different ways, and I thank you. Um, I thank this panel so much. I thank you guys so much for coming together with me and just letting your voices be heard and respond to you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this is the end of the video. If you haven't liked already, like the video, hit a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload, YouTube will send you a notification Aww. that I upload. This is Motivation for Young Christian, and I'm out. Peace.